Great to have you joining us today. My name is Andrew and I lead our online team here at LifeGate Church. And if you're joining us for the first time, I want to say a very special welcome to you. I don't want to take the time to explain how online church works and how you can get the most out of your experience today. The first way is this, is that LifeGate Church Online is designed to be an interactive experience. So we want you to be able to get the most out of it and feel connected and engaged in what's happening at LifeGate Church. So one way you can do this is throughout the service, you can watch it on any device, your phone, your iPad, your tablet, your laptop, your TV. And throughout the service, you can actually head to www.lifegate.online on any device and you can join the conversation. And what happens here is you can uh, read the Bible along with the the message. Uh, You can join uh, the chat and you can chat with other people who are tuning in from all over. And you can also click the request prayer button at any time throughout the service And what this does is it opens up a private, confidential, one-on-one chat with one of our team who would love to support you and do the journey with you. So that's one way that you can get involved and get the most out of online church today is by joining the conversation. The second way you can get the most out of online church is you can join our online Facebook group. And this is made up of people that want to do the journey together throughout the week. They want to get the most out of Uh, This online church family, they want to connect, they want to encourage, they want to support, they want to uh, share uh, what God's doing in their life, but also to ask for prayer for what's going on as well. And so if you would love to be connected with an online family, an online family that's going to support you, that's going to encourage you, that's going to do the journey of life with you, then I encourage you to click the link that says Facebook group, and we'd love to have you as a part of our online church family. So those are two ways that you can get the most out of this experience. Now, we have something really special. Uh, Over the next few weeks, we're doing what's called May Mission Month, where we're going to hear both some updates from our mission partners around the globe of what God is doing in their midst. Um, But also, we're going to hear from members of our community who are making a difference in everyday life. And I think you'll be encouraged by both of them. And uh, if you'd like to give to any of our mission partners through, throughout the next few weeks, what you can do is you can click the link that says May Mission Month on our website um, or down below. And uh, there's details on how to give. You can hear updates from all of those different mission partners, find out some more information. And we'd love for you to contribute to that. Well, that's it for today. We've got a great service planned. So now let's check out what's happening in Life This Week. Enjoy. This is Life This Week. Welcome to LifeGate Church Online. We encourage you to join our online Facebook group designed specifically for our online church community. There are 168 hours in a week and church is only one hour. This Facebook group is an opportunity to stay connected and encouraged throughout the week. To join the group, Head to lifegate.org.au forward slash online. If you're able, why don't you check out one of our physical locations in Padstow and Preston's in Sydney. The details are on our website. Our team would love to pray with you during online church. You can receive prayer by pressing the request prayer button at any point during the service. This will open up a private chat where you can receive prayer via messaging. Finally, We would like to thank you for your financial giving. Your generosity helps to impact many lives and see people live in the freedom and purpose that Jesus has for their lives. There are two ways to give online, via Tithely or by bank transfer. If you would like to give, head to our website. It has all the details. That's it for Life This Week. Alrighty, welcome back. Welcome everyone again. And we want to welcome those watching online. Great to have you guys here with us. Make sure you put a comment in the chat box and let us know that you're here. Hey friends, we're in our May Mission Month, as you know. And each week we're talking about one of our mission partners. But we're also celebrating someone in our church who's doing something for God and His kingdom. 
You're going to love this one. This is Tony Bo. If you met Tony and Christina, Tony started a business helping people who haven't got the ability to speak. So kids, particularly, who haven't got the ability to speak. And he created this app. And this app has had 360,000 downloads around the world. Check this out. Hi, I've got the privilege of sitting here today with a member of our Padstow congregation, Tony Bow, and he has an organisation called AAC Lifestyle, which we're going to talk about because he's making a difference in a lot of families' lives. So what does AAC Lifestyle stand for, Tony? So AAC life stands, Lifestyle stands for Augmentative and Alternative Communication. So that basically means um, it means for uh, individuals who don't have a voice, um, we help them by um, having augmentative as in supplementing, using a tool to support their voice, mm -hmm. or alternative means um, having a, a tool to replace their voice so that they have a voice. Yeah. Now, this all started with a brainwave you had about an app to help mm -hmm. people communicate. Uh, this app, I believe, has had over 360,000 downloads. Is yes. that it? Yeah, yeah, which is very amazing. So it's, it's obviously filled a huge need. Can you talk about what need it's filled? Like what, what have you, did you design the app for? Yeah, so I guess the app is, is really created for individuals who, um, yeah, who, who, who can't talk. So I guess it's, its aim is to encourage the user uh, as, well, as well as the people around them to be able to communicate with them. Um, so it's created to be um, motivating and um, versatile and practical and fun. So yeah, yeah. And with the aim to help them use the system more. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, you were telling me um, when we were talking about the app that there's been a lot of things from a medical point of view that hasn't been very user friendly and so you've mm -hmm. built something that is not medical but actually yeah. practical and helpful yes. and actually really helps these people to communicate. Yeah. Does it use like pictures or like what does it use? Yeah, so we've, um, I guess what one thing we found is is a lot of a lot of apps these days they focused on the individual and the therapist, which, uh, practically speaking, so it, the therapist can only work with an individual once a week. And being a teacher, I've noticed a lot of children, even though they have their apps or devices, they just don't get off uh, used often enough throughout the day. So, and with, without without it being used, it means the child doesn't have a voice for most of the day. So. I guess I've come up with a, a, a way that would help the teacher and help the parent or carer to help them to help them to help their child to communicate. It's amazing. So there's one way that somebody is using the gift that God's given them to make a huge difference in a lot of uh, children's and families' lives. Maybe it may, maybe it's making you think about how you can use your gifts and your talents to make a difference. Now, how about that, eh? So, is Tony here today? No? He's here, he's here. Oh, Tony, you're here. Awesome. I thought you might be coming at 10.30. Praise God for you. That's all. Is that awesome? That's awesome. We're going to pray. Father, thank you for Tony and what he does. Thank you for what you put in his heart and may this help lots of people. In Jesus' name, amen. Making a difference for the kingdom. Make sure you talk to him at the end. Hassle him, find out more about it. That's great. Well, our mission partner for today, those online, those in the room, I want to tell you, talk to you about is Transform Cambodia. Um, a couple of years ago, we launched Transform Cambodia and LifeGate became a partner with them. We took on a center that was 100 kids and we sponsored them and we're still sponsoring them year to year. And uh, due to COVID, um, Cambodia is very different to Australia. <laughs> Um, it's very difficult. So we want to show you two videos. We want to show you something that we showed the church last year. It's about a minute long. What was happening last year around COVID? And then we'll give you the update. Check out this first one. Hello, 
our sponsor Black Get Church. Now we're gonna tell you what we are doing right now during COVID-19 season. Our kids may not be in the center, but this doesn't stop our amazing LifeGate Center team from connecting with them. We are using technology to teach math, music, games, lots of smile and love. One of our team is in personal contact with every one of our kids every day. Operation Lighthouse at Center 33 is giving our team the opportunity to prepare and distribute 100 hot meals a day to those in most need in our community. But we are not just delivering food, we are delivering hope. Thank you for all sponsors of LifeGate Church for your caring, love and support our kids. You know you are the big supporter for our center. May God bless you! For uh, those of us who have been part of LifeGate Church for some time, you would have met Lynn and he's been here a few times. Uh, this Transform Cambodia might be all new to you and if you're new to LifeGate it might be. So we're uh, continuing to sponsor um, the kids, it's about 50 bucks a month and every now and again a kid comes up to sponsor and we'll let you know about that. But each year we need to raise $15,000 on top of that sponsorship to go towards the centre. Now that's only about a third of the cost. Some of the guys that started it who are wealthy businessmen cover two thirds of the cost so we only give a bit. But this year, because we're, we're ahead in our giving, we, we normally give 15, we only need to give, need, only need to give 10 this year because we're ahead. Um, so I encourage you to, to continue to give to this great ministry. I want to show you a video now of Just Linen because everything's closed in Cambodia right now. He'll tell you about that. Check this out. Hello, like at church. How have you been doing so far? I hope you have been doing well by God's grace. Now, I would love to tell you briefly about the situation that are happening right now in Cambodia. Firstly, I would love to tell you about our kids and family in our contacts every day since in late February until now. The COVID-19, you know that, has spread all around in Cambodia in the second round. The places are in the restrictions, so all the schools, roads, markets, shops are locking down. Even though the schools are locking down, you know what happened to Transform? We still run online learning class with our kids and keep contacting to our kids' family as normal. Every day I divide our staff into five groups to call to our kids' family, you know, that's we call pastoral care. The reason that we do this is because we want to take care of our family. We want to know and make more relationship with them during this hard time. We want to know they are safe or not, or what part that we can pray for them, or what that we can help them during this lockdown. You know, after we called to our parents last week, do you know what happened? We got the information of our kids' family that they are infection of COVID-19. So it is sad for us. But Transform had prepared some food pack for them. I pray for them every day and brought them some food pack. Now their parents are curing in the hospital. I believe and trust that God completely healed them. And I declare that there is nothing that can against with them anymore. The hands of the Lord will protect them and take care of them. And this time, I ask all of you to join hand to pray for our kids' family as well. Secondly, I just would love to tell you about our staff. They are safe and fine for our staff and I we are working from home. You know, this is the first time for us because we never have the experience to work from home like this before. And 4 to 4.30 p.m., I have Zoom meeting with my teams every day to recap the work for the whole day. And my new year this month, we didn't go anywhere. We uh, go to the province to visit our homeland. We just stay in Phnom Penh because every road 
is blocked. Do you know what happened when Khmer New Year coming? Normally, we go to visit our family at the province. We have a party with family and friends, or we visit some resort in Cambodia. But this year, we just stay home only. Finally, I would love all the family of Lighthead Church join hands together to pray for our kids, family and staff and the situation in Cambodia right now. I believe that the COVID-19 will be gone from the lands of Cambodia. God will heal our people. Thank you so much for your prayers, love, care and sponsoring to our kids during this pandemic. May God bless you. Wow, let's pray, hey, let's commit it to the Lord. Father, we want to bring to you the nation of Cambodia. Um, Father, we know that in this nation there is a lot of um, uh, this COVID things just spread so much. We pray for your healing hand in Jesus' name. We pray for the doctors, Lord. We pray your healing. We pray for this nation. We pray for the leaders that they'll make wise choices. And we bring Transform Cambodia before you, God. We, we pray, Lord. That, the, that this ministry, this ministry that brings hope, will continue to spread the message of Jesus throughout this nation, throughout Phnom Penh. That these centers of hundreds of kids, these 35 centers, 36 centers, then the teachers, we pray for each one. We pray that every, every person that comes in contact with Transform Cambodia will come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. We thank you for the 6,000 adults that are in small groups and these um, and the and the set, and the worship services they're setting up for the adults throughout the year for adults to come and hear the gospel and worship you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for what they're doing. We pray, Lord, for the finances that will come in. We pray for this ten thousand for this ministry and for the thirty-four thousand for all that we're doing, making a difference this month for May Mission Month. Father, put it on your people, those watching online, those here in the room, what you want us to give to this. And that we will reach this 34,000 goal by the end of May and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us in prayer. Thank, continue to pray for them. Um, update. So far we've had 12 people are given towards our May Mission Month. And our tally is at $6,500. So we've still got 27000 to go. So now's the week. Let's make it happen. Um, we welcome Andrew Lingley as he brings the word today. One, two, there we go. Well, good morning, everyone. How are we? Good. So for those I haven't got the privilege of meeting yet, my name's Andrew. I'm one of the pastors here at LifeGate Church. And uh, uh, some of the areas I oversee, for those that know nothing about me, are young adults, but also our online campus. And to give you some insight of what my week kind of looks like, I, I work here two days. I also work a few days in some local high schools. And um, I'm also studying my Master's of Theology at the moment. And towards the end of my Master's, what I have to do is I have to write a 24,000-word research essay, which is a lot. And um, what I'm looking at doing that on is online church and how it can be used as a means to disciple and equip people to live out for Jesus in their lives. And so as you can probably tell, I'm pretty passionate about online church, which is probably good when you're leading it, right? Um, and so what I wanted to do today is just share some of the incredible stories and some of the incredible people that I've been able to connect with over the last 12 months um, and share some of their stories and what it means for us. Now, we can all probably get a little bit sceptical sometimes, especially when it comes to things online. And I think some of us would admit that if we had the choice between Zoom or in person, hands up if you would choose in person. Hands up if you're happy with Zoom. Well, you're here, so. <laughs> um, and so maybe you've wondered why we as a church are still doing online church when we're back in person. And so today I've titled my message, Why Are We Still Doing Online Church? And 
As we said, majority of us would probably choose in the room over Zoom. But what about those that can't choose to be in the room? What about those that live remotely or maybe have health issues or maybe they travel for work or they work shift work? What choice do they have and what community is there for them? And so that's the problem we set out to explore when we started this journey of going online church. We asked the question, what kind of community could we create for people to discover who Jesus is and connect with people in the same boat as them? So not just simply putting a video online or pressing live or record, but actually how could we connect these people and give them an opportunity to encounter Jesus? And so today what I want to do is I want to share some of the stories and celebrations of the last 12 months. I want to unpack some of Paul's writing in Colossians and what it could mean for our online church communities and for us as a church. And then talk about where we're going into the future and how we as a church can play a part in that. And so I want to just share some stories and give you a big picture overview. So these are some quotes from uh, people that are a part of our online campus. The first is this. It's so easy to lose your faith without being in community with other believers. As I can't get to church in person, I'm so grateful I could still connect with others to encourage me around the real purpose of life. The second one is this. For me, online church has meant a sense of community at a time where we were isolated and not able to physically attend church. It kept my faith strong, still hearing God's word and sharing with others through the chat and being able to pray for others. God has certainly used technology to reach out to people in the community so Jesus could be presented in a real way. And the last one is this, online church is a lifeline. It's a blessing for me and my sister to connect and get prayed for as well. And those are just some of the stories. I'm going to share more stories as we go throughout today. But what I wanted to do now is I wanted to uh, do a big picture zoom out and look at the last 12 months and look at some of the data that we've um, found and been able to see over the last 12 months um, and how it's shaping where we're going going forwards. So the first data I want to share with you is around our online church platform, which is lifegate.online. And this is where people can engage live in the services. They can get prayer and pastoral care. They can take next steps. They can read the Bible along in the service. Um, And over the last 12 months, here's some of what we've seen on that platform. We've seen 55,000 minutes attended on this platform. We've seen 1,352 unique devices connected. So that could be a laptop, a tablet, a phone, something like that. Uh, We've seen eight first-time decisions to follow Jesus. And we've seen 82 prayer sessions between our pastoral care hosts and those online. The next one is YouTube, our YouTube page. Um, And if you have YouTube and you haven't followed us, hit that subscribe button, please. Uh, the, what we've seen so far is 5,340 total views and 104 subscribers. And I'll tell you, all of these numbers that I'm giving you now, I've had to update them since I preached at Preston's last week. Um, the next one is SoundCloud, where we host our podcast on. And over the last 12 months, we've seen 8,622 plays on that platform. Um, And since we've started putting our podcasts up, so far we've seen 24,169 plays. The next data I want to share with you is about our Facebook group. So in December, I went, wouldn't it be great if these people could connect outside of a Sunday with one another, where they could share prayer updates, um, share celebrations of what God is doing in their life, and access resources if they need them. And so what I did is I created a private Facebook group for these people and I invited four key people that had been a part of our online community and I said, why don't you invite people that you think could benefit from this? And within 24 hours, we went from four people to 35 people. And so far, we've got 66 total members in that group. And at our online church team meeting a few months back, I printed out a list of these 66 names and I said, how many names do you recognize? 
And most people out of 66 probably recognized about 10, which means that there's 55, 56 people that these team doesn't even know yet and have decided to connect and be a part of this Facebook group. The next one is we've seen 96 total posts in that group, 245 comments and 404 reactions so far since December. And the last one is our website, which I updated in November last year. And so far we've seen 2.9 thousand website visits, 2.1 thousand unique visitors to that website, 6,442 page views, 74 form submissions. That's someone letting us know that they're coming to church or letting us know um, that they'd like to join a life group or something like that. And then 850 button clicks. And isn't it funny that you can tell how many times someone has clicked a button? Um, but I hope what that does is I hope that it encourages you and shows you a big picture of what God has been up to online over the last 12 months. And I want to share another quick cool story with you. So we've had a number of new families and a number of individuals who have come to First Steps over the last year. And all of them have come through online church. They've either listened to our podcast or they've uh, watched a few messages a few weeks in a row. And then they've come in person to be a part of our community and want to find out more about who we are. And I think that in of itself gives you a little bit of an idea of why we're still doing online church. But I want to now unpack what vision does Paul give us about what this could look like? And then I want to talk about where are we going from here? So I want to unpack the words Paul gives us. Um, he uh, gives it to us in Colossians chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. And when the apostle Paul wrote, wrote these words, he was imprisoned in Rome and he was writing letters to encourage the communities throughout Colossae or present day Turkey. And here's what he says. He says this, I want you to know how hard I'm contending for you. And for those, uh, oh, I just, sorry, let us hear, that's it. And for all who have not met me personally, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so no one may deceive you by fine sounding arguments. For though I'm absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. And so that's the passage we're going to look at today. And I want to unpack five insights that Paul gives us from this passage, which are these. Number one, he had not met them personally. Number two, his goal was to encourage and unite. Number three, he wanted them to know Jesus. Number four, we can be united in spirit. And number five, we can celebrate what God is doing in people. So that's what we're going to look at today. The first insight, he had not met them personally. And in Colossians 2.1, we see that Paul is writing to people that he hasn't necessarily met before. Now, just because we haven't met someone doesn't mean we can't have some kind of a relationship with them. We write emails at work to clients. We call our bank for help with our banking accounts. We rent from a landlord that we often have not met. And we interact with people all the time that we haven't met personally. The difference is here that Paul doesn't see this as a barrier, but rather even more of a reason to write and engage with the people at this time. And Paul, he used the tools of his day, which were letter writing. For online church, we would consider this the digital letter writing of today. We write messages, we write emails, we share video calls, we share messages to encourage those that we have not necessarily met personally. And so what we can learn from Paul is, even though he had not met them personally, that was not a barrier to engaging with them. The second point is this, that his goal was to encourage and unite. And Colossians 2 verse 2 shares Paul's goal pretty simply, that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love. And at least from my understanding, that's the same goal that Jesus has for his church. 
to be encouraged and united in love. And that's the same goal for online church as well. That despite geographical barriers, despite health barriers, despite work and other barriers, that it would be a place where people are able to be encouraged and united in Jesus and what he is doing in their lives. And as I said, our Facebook group, we started in December. It's grown to 66 members. Why? I think it's because people want to feel connected and a part of something bigger. They want to stay encouraged throughout the week and united across a community of people that are trying to live out their faith just like them. And so Paul shows us that even though we have not met them personally, that his goal was to encourage and unite them. The third insight is that he wanted them to know Jesus. And later in Colossians 2.2, 2, Paul writes that his goal is to encourage people so that they may know who Jesus is. And this is the heart, friends, of the Great Commission that Jesus gives us to go into the world and to share Jesus with those around us. And uh, at the end of last year, we sent out a feedback form to those who'd been joining us online, asking them what they thought um, and finding out more information about who they are. And one of the things we found out is that out of those that filled in the survey, 70% identified as Christians and 30% said they were exploring Christianity and who Jesus was. So that means three out of 10 people are wanting to know more about who Jesus is and what he might mean for their lives. And this is backed up by data released a few weeks ago by Alpha. Those that know Alpha, the the video course of exploring the Christian faith. They partnered up to do research with an organization called McCrindle Research. And what they did was they researched the openness of Australians to spirituality. And here's what they found. They found that, firstly, that one in three Australians spent time thinking about God during the pandemic. They also found that one in three are praying more and one in four started reading the Bible for the first time. And the conclusion of this research was that this is the greatest season of evangelism potential in our lifetime. That's what they said, the greatest season of evangelism potential in our lifetime. And so friends, if we are living in the greatest potential in our lifetime, then how much more needed is a place like online church for people to explore and encounter who Jesus is with other people? So that's the third insight, that he wanted them to know Jesus. The fourth insight is that we can be united in spirit. And Paul writes in Colossians 2.5, even though he was absent from them in body, he was present and united with them in spirit. And here's something important that I want us to understand is that our online community is a part of our church. They are not people that are checking us out. They're not people that are outside of our church, but they're people that are united with us and a part of our family. Even though you have not met them, even though you have not spoken to them or heard their stories, they are a part of what God is doing in and through LifeGate Church and they're a part of our church family. So I encourage you, be united in spirit with them. Pray for them. Think about how you could be a part of encouraging and supporting our community online. So that's the fourth insight, that we can be united in spirit. The last insight is that we can celebrate what God is doing in people. And Paul continues on in the second half of verse 5 to say that he was delighted to see how disciplined the community was and how firm their faith in Jesus was. Or in short, he was celebrating what God was doing in the people there. And that's what we can do as well. As we get the privilege of connecting with those online and supporting them in their faith journey, we get to celebrate what God is doing in them and what God is doing through them as well. So just to recap, here's the five insights we learned. Number one, that he had not met them personally. His goal was to encourage and unite. He wanted them to know Jesus. We can be united in spirit and we can celebrate what God is doing in people. And when I think about the Apostle Paul and what he would have thought if he lived in 2021, 
I think you would have been excited at the potential of reaching and encouraging people through online mediums. And here's the image I get. So I found a painting of Paul. There it is, some letters, some, a sword, some kind of a cloak. And here's the 2021 edition. <laughs> All right? Now, I think the Apostle Paul would have been the king of Twitter. He would have been posting vlogs on YouTube. He would have been uh, inviting everyone to like Facebook pages and join Facebook groups. He would have been writing emails. He would have been FaceTiming people on a daily basis. And he would have been the iPad king of evangelism. So I want to quickly talk about some of our priorities for online church and where we're going into the future with it and how we as a church can support that and be a part of that too. So on Vision Sunday, Nathan shared five focus areas for us as a church. And I want to quickly share how we're working towards those for our online community. The first is this, personal time with Jesus. And what we're going to be doing is on our website, we're going to be creating church-wide resources for people to spend personal time with Jesus. And that's people at Padstow, Preston's online, anyone that's a part of our church. We can do the journey together. We can be praying for the same things. We can be going into the scriptures in the same way, and we can be united doing that together. The second one is Sunday services. And what we do for our online community is we offer them two options, that either they can join us live and get prayer and pastoral care and support throughout the service, or they can watch it on demand at a time that works for them, if they're working shift work or whatever. Uh, Number three is life groups. And we have life groups that meet online and in homes throughout the week. And we want to continue to support and champion this. Number four is Foundations, which is a 10, 11 week course where people can do one on one and that can be done online. I'm doing it over Zoom with someone at the moment. But we also want to create an on demand resource where people can go through it at their own pace and explore what the Christian faith is all about. And the last one is Making a Difference. And friends, we believe that every single person in LifeGate Church can make a difference. And whether we're in the room or whether we're online, people can make a difference online too. And uh, so those are some of the priorities in how we're working towards those. And so maybe you feel excited about what I've just shared. Or maybe you feel unsure about what this means for you. And so the, the thing is, friends, that we're one church in three locations, in Padstow, in Preston's, and online, which means that every single person that calls LifeGate Church home has a part to play, and they can make a difference in the lives of others. And so I want to give us all some practical ways that we can support what God is throwing, doing through our online community and share the message with, of Jesus with those who haven't heard it. So the first way that you could make a difference is by spreading the word. You can like and comment and share some of the stuff that we're putting up on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. You can get involved that way. And I wonder if you've ever felt like this, but sometimes I'm sitting in church, maybe listening to Kath or listening to Nathan or someone speak, and I go, I wish this person could hear this message. I wonder if you've ever thought that before. Or if you have, guess what? Now you can. It's easy. You go to YouTube, you go to our podcast, you grab the link, you text it to them, you email it to them, and you know what's going on in their life, and you know if a message might speak into that or not. The second way is you can join a team, and those are some of the incredible teams that we have. We have our broadcast team that controls our cameras and our live streams and our recordings. We have our photography team that captures and celebrates what God is doing within our church. We have our media team that creates those awesome videos like Life This Week and the May Mission Month videos. And we have our online hosts that pastorally care for people online and our life group leaders. And I just wanted to quickly celebrate and highlight some of the people in our church that have been doing that. We have Joel um, somewhere who's been a part of many of those teams. We have Sarah who's a part of our broadcast team. We have uh, Carl for those that know him. He's been integral in editing some of those podcasts and messages and taking photos. 
And we have our incredible online hosts uh, of Donna and Greg, for those that know them, uh, Julie Harding and Rob Moores, uh, all pastorally caring for people and connecting with them online every week. The third one is you can do foundations with someone online. And this has been a real highlight of mine over the last 12 months since I've been leading this community, getting to hop on Zoom with people and doing foundations. Currently, I'm week 10 of 11 with doing it with someone. And it's been so awesome to dive into the word with them, to be able to pray and hear what God is doing in their life and to be able to encourage them and support them in their faith. And so I encourage you, it's super easy. If you want to find out about foundations, you can grab a booklet from the Start Here desk. And I encourage you to do it. You can do it over FaceTime if you can't meet with people. Do it over Facebook, Zoom, whatever works for you. And the last one is this, which is starting a hub. And this is what I'm most excited about and what me and my team have been working on for the last few months. And what we found is that there's three types of people or three categories of people that are a part of our online community. The first is people that only want to join us online, and that's what works for them, and that's perfectly valid and okay. The second one is people that want to check out online and then join us in person, and that's also valid. And the third way is that people want to be encouraged online, but they want to make a difference in their local area and in the relationships that God has given them. And so here's a big vision that we're setting together as a church. What if online became the resource to see hubs started locally in person? And a hub is any kind of face-to-face gathering. It could be a mum's group. It could be friends over for a barbecue on a Wednesday night. It could be in an aged care facility, a local park. It could be on your lunch break with colleagues at work. And basically, whatever it is, is it's a space where people are meeting in person to discover who Jesus is. And what if we as a church resource that through our online church content and myself and my team checks in with them and pastorally cares for them and finds out the needs of their community, but they are the one on the ground leading and encouraging those people each week. And a hub could take many forms with live worship, with videos on a TV, on a laptop, and we want to resource and encourage the creativity of people within our church to reach people around them with the life-giving message of Jesus. How exciting is that, right? I don't know if you get excited by that, but remember, we are living in the greatest season of evangelism potential in our lifetime, according to Alpha. And so if that's the case, there's no better time to reach people with Jesus than now. And so I wonder, how could you make a difference And what I want to do is just give you 30 seconds to have a look at that list and think about what you could do to make a difference. Because as I said, everyone that calls LifeGate Church home can make a difference in the lives of others. So take 30 seconds to reflect on that and then we'll pray and we'll close our service. And so, friends, as we wrap up, imagine how we could make a difference in the lives of those both online and in our local communities, how new people could get the opportunity to explore who Jesus is, how people could be connected and encouraged even when they can't join us in person, and where we could all share the message of Jesus together. And so I encourage you, if you'd like to chat more with me, I'd love to chat over coffee. For those online, if you have any questions, I'd love for you to let us know in the chat box and someone will get in touch with you. And what I want to do is as we close, I want to invite those that would like some prayer to come forward. For those online, we're going to give some discussion questions and some prayer time for you. And we're going to release you now. Have a great week.